a deadly apocalypse that is part of the first half of the tribulation. Jimmy Evans uncovers the pale horse and what it means for humanity in the end times. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're enjoying Table Talk. And remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest content. An ancient prophecy unfolding in modern headlines. The world descending into chaos. A great deception masquerading as peace. As a new regime rises, a leader will usher in lawlessness, setting up the final chapter of human history. Welcome to the end times. Well, wars and rumors of wars, are we seeing the events of the book of Revelation happening before our eyes? And if so, are there worse things on the horizon? Well, today, with the help of our special guest, we'll dive more into the end times to see what happens in the last days. First joining me around the table is Dorothy Newton. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> you know, I, I never get tired of trying to understand Revelation or end times. Do you? No, it's a chapter in the Bible I hardly ever read. So yeah. when I come here, I am all open to learn more yes. and more and more. Yes. So, thank well, you. Rebecca Lamb Weiss is still with us. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> However, in a few weeks, you will be delivering. I will be on a jet plane. I won't be on a jet plane, but I will be delivering a child. That's right. You feel That's like right. a jet plane. Yeah. Rachel Lamb Brown, welcome Hello. to the table. I'm glad to be here. How are you doing? I'm okay. I broke my foot. I know. So right? it's under here broken right now. But you can't yeah. tell. What you can't see is that her foot is elevated under With ice. the table talk. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm glad you're here today because you've been stuck at home. Yes. I'm glad to be out with all of you. You oh, can't yes. even tell, okay. Joni, because she's so beautiful. Oh, you no. cannot tell that's anything that's happening no, underneath. No, you can't. Underneath. Yeah, yeah, for sure. True. You love Dorothy forever, right? Forever. <laughs> my girl. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm doing great. You've been up in the hills of North Carolina. Oh, my goodness. You know, and the air is amazing up there. I bet. I bet. <laughs> All right. Well, we're just talking about everything. Well, he is one of your favorite guests <laughs> at the table, and his insight into end times is unparalleled. Please welcome our dear friend, Jimmy Evans. <laughs> We always Yay. give you good music to walk out. Sounds like I love music. it. I love it. Very action. Yeah. You can see. Perfect. Well, you know, as economies become increasingly um, volatile and regional conflicts escalate to a global scale, the Bible tells us that the days will get more wicked and more deadly. Today, Jimmy is here to tell us about one of the coming events, which is the pale horse apocalypse. Y'all ever heard of that? Mm -mm. Yes. Okay, so tell us. What is this, Jimmy? Well, the, the early church, one of their primary messages, well, the, the message that was primary was the gospel of, by grace, mm -hmm. but also the coming of Jesus. And it motivated evangelism, and it motivated holy living. You know, they, they always were preaching Jesus is coming, so be ready when he comes, and preach the gospel to people so they're ready. Well, this message today is not necessarily for believers in the sense that if you're a believer, you're not going to be here when this happens. But you need to know what's going to happen for the sake of your lost loved ones, uh, for true. those that you know, you know, uh, family, sons, daughters, husbands, wives, uh, mothers, fathers, whoever it might be, neighbors, friends. Something horrific is going to happen during the tribulation. Now, there's 21 judgments during the tribulation. There are the seal judgments. That, that's when the tribulation begins. In Revelation 6, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about one out of 21 judgments that kills a fourth of mankind. Wow. Mm. Okay, so there's 21 judgments. We're going to talk about one of them. But the rapture of the church has already taken place. That's right. But there are people watching that don't know the Lord right. Right. that will remember this conversation. And, and even if, even if you, you're a Christian because you go to church or you're a Christian because your wife is a Christian, you consider yourself a Christian. There's the noun Christian, there's the verb Christian. And if you're just a Christian with a noun that just means I identify as a Christian, but you don't know Jesus, you're, you're going to be here when this happens. Yeah. The only people that go on the rapture are the people who know Jesus. So the, there is a, an apocalypse. Now, the word apocalypse, uh, and that's why I titled this the Pale Horse Apocalypse, it's an event involving destruction or damage on an awesome or cataclysmic scale. So we're talking here about cataclysmic damage that's going to happen during the tribulation. This is Revelation 6. This is the fourth seal. The first seal was the Antichrist, the rider on the white horse. Mm -hmm. uh, so then when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. 
and see, so I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, mm. and the beasts of the earth. Now, I want to talk about the beasts of the earth specifically in this, in this program, because this is horrific, what's going to happen. Now, the word here for pale horse is the word chloros mm. uh, in the Greek, and it, it's green. It's just a pale, deathly green color. Mm. So this, this deathly green color comes, and it's Hades. Hades was sitting on the horse, and death followed behind him. Now, this is Revelation 14. Wow. It says, A third angel, angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. Listen to this. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels mm -hmm. and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. See, people who are tormented in hell, the angels are there and Jesus is there. Mm. You know, Jesus will be with us in heaven, the Father's house also. But Jesus is the Lord of hell. So the devil and all the evil people of the earth, you will be tormented in the presence of Jesus who you rejected. Mm. So literally, this is hell. God sins. God is the sovereign over hell and death. And so God sends Hades and death to harvest a quarter of the earth. Wow. In, in other words, to harvest a quarter of the souls of the earth down to hell. It's and how terrifying. will that be? Like, do you know how, how they'll die? The sword, hunger, death. Now, that would be disease, accident, suicide, whatever that might be, and be. So the, remember the rider on the red horse, the second seal came and took peace from the earth that men might kill each other. Mm -hmm. Now, you think there's oh, yeah. violence on the earth right now? It's you crazy. haven't seen anything. The We've seen the videos, like, of crazy things it's going on yeah. in stores oh. with people and right. attacking so that's one like another. That's nothing compared Times to... Times a thousand. Times a thousand. Times a thousand. When the red horse, the, the second seal, when the red horse comes and peace is taken from the earth, you won't be able to go to the grocery store without the threats of violence. Wow. There will be people attacking people and killing people like you've never seen before. Is that peace like the Holy Spirit? Of who, like, provides the peace on the earth? Or? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, the restraining force of the earth, yeah. So it'll be lifted it off. That's right. So That's men can just kind of, are going to go kind of crazy. People will go crazy. We but don't we even realize that, that peace, though, oh, do we? Right. Like, I mean, it's like, That's, like, That's exactly right. See, we live, the world is so evil that we live in, we're going, oh, my gosh, it's so violent. You, this, this world is restrained. Yeah. We'll talk about animals here in just a minute. You won't believe it. Okay, that, what's, yeah. what's going to happen with the animals? President Biden said yeah. a couple of weeks ago, we're about to have food shortages and it's going to be real. China just had their worst winter wheat crop in history. America, the United States, 71% of our present winter wheat crop has been affected by drought. Uh, Russia is under sanctions. Russia and the Ukraine provide one-third of the world's grain. They, oh, they yeah. export one-third of the world's grain. Russia is the number one exporter of fertilizer. Okay, so fertilizer, the farmers that fertilize, if they don't, they have 40% less crops. Yeah. They have to have fertilizer. So fertilizer prices are going up, fuel wow. prices are going up, mm -hmm. shipping prices are going up up to 400%. And so you've got the world is being set up right now. Many farmers aren't planning because of fuel prices, because of yeah. the fertilizer, uh, transportation. So now you have this uh, worldwide problem uh, of food shortages. And, be, and before all that happened, you had COVID mm -hmm. and COVID, the supply chain issues. Mm -hmm. So now they're warning uh, the, the, the leaders around the world, the United Nations Food Bank, everybody's warning that we have famines coming that are going to affect hundreds of millions of people. When do you think that those will start? Next fall. Uh, so, but think about this, though, Jimmy, yeah. that the, the places in the world that already have food shortages. That's right, Joni. And so That's here, right. if we, who never have a few food shortage, yeah. have a food shortage, then those people are going to die because we won't even have anything to send them. To them. There, there will be uh, over 400 million people die of hunger in the first um, three and a half years of tribulation. And so remember, famine is a birth pain. Jesus said in Matthew 24, there'll be pestilences, earthquakes, and famines. He says these are the beginning of the birth pain. So the word birth pain there literally means travail. It's the beginning of the pain. Right. When you have birth. The real pain. Lots of pain, real pain. <laughs> and, and it gets worse and worse. And so Jesus is saying famines and earthquakes, we've had seismic activity and volcanic activity that's been increasing dramatically. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, you know, the, the, all, all of the signs of the times were forced. 
Well, now we have the beginnings of a worldwide famine that will last for years. These compounds, and by the way, war, the rider on the red horse in Revelation precedes the rider on the black horse, and the black horse says it'll take a day's wage to buy a quart of wheat or three quarts of barley. In other words, it'll, the average person will have spent all the money they make just to buy enough food to survive. Oh my and that goodness. you kind of are feeling that already at the Absolutely. grocery store. Like I have never seen stuff go up so high so fast for or food. some or of the shelves, shelves be empty. Yeah. Or em yeah, yeah, and you can't even get what you in need. the United States. Yes. Yeah, it, it's shocking. So, so what we're seeing now is the world set up for uh, not only the birth pangs of famine, because we've really never seen, there's always been a little bit of famine in different places in the world. And by the way, Lebanon and Syria are both rationing food because they buy their food from Ukraine. They buy their, their grain from the Ukraine. So what are you going to do to prepare? Okay. So, I'll, I'll tell you just a minute. Why can't you see the question you do to me? Rachel's just asking what everyone at home is thinking. Jesus is coming. Well, me, I'm making secret plans over here let, while you're talking. Let me go ahead and answer that question. I'm not a prepper, and the reason I'm not is because Jesus said in Matthew 24, he said that the coming of the Son of Man would be like the days of Noah before the flood, buying and selling, marrying, giving in marriage. I don't believe we'll see mass starvation in America, but we will see very high food prices and the vulnerable... Very high gas prices. Very high <laughs> gas prices. Very, just <laughs> just fill in the blank. But we'll have very high food prices, and the vulnerable people will need help. They'll, they'll need assistance. But there'll be areas of the world that will be dramatically affected, and people will die. There'll be uh, widespread famine. The, so not only is famine a birth pain, you get on the other side of the rapture, it's Revelation chapter 6. It is the, the pale horse and the black horse. The black horse is scarcity. There's major scarcity on the earth. And then you have the pale horse where a fourth of mankind dies. So let me, let me do a little is math Is the pale here. horse the fourth one? Uh, the fourth one the is order. the pale horse. It's the white horse, the Antichrist. It's the red horse takes peace from the earth. It's the black horse of scarcity. And then it's the pale horse where a quarter of mankind dies. Yeah, the fourth. So he, the pale horse is the big one. The pale, yeah, it's a, it's a big one. It really is. Is that the first three and a half years that it will appear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the first three and a half years. So it's it, literally the, the seal, of the first seal of the Antichrist, that begins the tribulation. That's mm -hmm. the beginning right there. So right now there's 7.9 billion people in the world. You talk about a fourth of mankind will be killed. 2.3 billion people today on the planet practice Christianity. They, they say that they're Christians. Okay, Number one religion in the world. Um, but Jesus said in Matthew 25 when he told the parable of the virgins that there were five wise and five foolish. So let's assume for a minute that half the church will be false. They say they're Christians, but they're not really Christians. They really don't know Jesus. So that means 1.15 billion people will be raptured. If the rapture happens soon, 1.15 billion, that leaves 6.7 billion people after the rapture. So a quarter of those people will die. That's 1,687,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,
Well, right now, the animals of the earth are, are afraid of us. So yeah. we were in Africa, Karen's parents, this is probably about 1998, Karen's mom and dad took the entire family to Africa. And we were in South Africa, Botswana, in Zimbabwe. Oh, wow. And so when we were in South Africa, they would ask us, do you want to go on a nature walk? And Karen and I went on a walk every day. Well, these guys were with you and they had these big hairy guns. And our guys were named Blessed and Solomon. And they're really <laughs> great guys. And so we would go out, go out walk. We're a lion country. Everybody close up, but they had big guns on. You know, this is great. So then we went to Botswana. And so we go to Botswana, and this guy says, you guys want to go on a walk? And we said, sure. So we went on a walk. Out. We were in lion country. And we were about a mile from the camp, and he didn't have a gun. I, I looked over and realized he didn't have a gun. And I said, hey, where's your gun? He said, we don't need a gun. I said, yeah, we need a gun. <laughs> and those, I'm serious. I was terrified. And I, we're in lion country. Yeah. If anything happens to him, we don't know where right. we are. Right. And so and it was Karen and me and Karen's dad and another couple. And Karen's dad was probably 70 at the time. So, uh, I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. And we're in lion country, so we're walking down this road, and the guide said, we don't need a gun. These animals are afraid of us. And he said, just don't run, because if you run, they'll kill you. If you turn your back on an animal, they'll kill you. So we're walking down this road with this guy that didn't have a gun <laughs> and a bull elephant, a bachelor bull elephant. Bachelor means he's been yeah. rooted out of the herd right. by the others. He's and in he's, a bad, And he's, he's angry. He's very angry. That's yeah. the most aggressive. And he's in musk. Yes. Which he has this hormone coming from his head, which means he's triple angry. So he's in musk, and he sees us and starts wagging his head and screaming. <laughs> and runs at us, rushes at oh us. Oh, my goodness. And so our guide says, get behind me. We were, we were in a single file behind him. He was going to oh become a, an goodness. offering to the elephant god. <laughs> so oh my we're all behind him in single file, and the elephant rushes us, and he went, <laughs> and the elephant stopped. He just kind of shook his head and came at us again, started you know, yelling again and screaming and coming at us. Came at us the second time, he went, <laughs> and that elephant turned and walked off. What? Wow. Yeah. And I had to go back to camp and change my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you didn't go on another nature walk with this guy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, but what he said was, these animals are afraid of us, yeah. and they are. They'll do a territorial charge, but it's, it's terrifying. Mm. And so other, other guides were telling us about you know, groups of uh, people that they would have with them, and they had a group that turned and ran, and uh, one, a guy got killed. Wow. Because once they see your neck, once they see that you're fearful, and that's all a lesson about the devil, you know, just don't yeah. run. Yeah. But, but during the tribulation, wow. I want you to think about this. It won't matter if you clap. That, that <laughs> no, no animal, and I don't, know if, I don't know if animals will turn their owners or not, but 421 million people die Mm. That's so sad. Uh, isn't that unbelievable? Yes. And so I'm saying you think about your relatives and your loved ones. It's just a world of chaos. You think, you think about pieces taken from the earth. You're in danger everywhere you go. You can barely survive. You can barely make enough money to survive, eat to survive. And the animal kingdom has no fear of you. And wherever you go, the animals are going to attack you. But you still have life going on and the Antichrist. Yeah. And, you know, that will be ruling with the false prophet. Well, let me answer the question of how, to, how you prepare uh, for okay. what I'm talking about. Because I'm, I'm not a prepper, because I believe that Jesus is going to come, the rapture is before the tribulation. You don't have any extra bread stashed up? We do. We, <laughs> we, 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 I think it's responsible. Bit. I think it's responsible to have two to three months of food. Yeah. And so we have some of the freeze-dried food uh, in our pantry and upstairs. And uh, the point being is, but it's not just for that. It's just a, a national emergency. What right. if Russia hits our infrastructure? What if they begin and to have China cyber attacks? China owns so yeah. much of our farmland that Ab we don't even realize Absolutely they, they control do. it. You bet they do. So it's just responsible, I think, just to have two or three months of food and stuff like that. But yeah. there are other people that say that you need seven years of food or that kind of stuff. Or you need a bunker. Yeah, well, let, me say, let me tell you how to prepare for the tribulation. Buy a grave because you'll probably die. There's no way to survive it. Wow. There'll be very few people that survive the tribulation. It's just, how do you survive the tribulation? Mm -hmm. And people who say we're going to go through the tribulation, they're just not informed. Revelation right. 13 says that the Antichrist is given authority over the saints during yeah. the tribulation. Yeah, he is. And he so, the, so many people die, but here's, here's one of the things I want to say. The, 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 the animal kingdom is controlled by God. This is Jeremiah 27. Mm. And now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beast of the field I have also given to serve him. And so peace with the animal kingdom is actually a blessing from God, but judgment from the animal kingdom is actually also a judgment from God. This is Deuteronomy 32, and this is talking now about Israel. For a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn to the lowest hell. It shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the, mount, the foundations of the mountains. 
I will heap disasters on them. I will spend my arrows on them. They shall be wasted with hunger. And by the way, famine is always part of the judgment of God yeah. here. Devoured by pestilence and bitter destruction, I will also send against them the teeth of the beast with the poison of serpents and of dust. And what God is saying here is, my people, Israel, when you turn on me, when you reject me, I'm going to send the animals against you. Mm -hmm. You'll have hunger, you'll have all these things. So this is what we see that's coming in the tribulation is one judgment. There's 21 judgments in the book of Revelation. One judgment kills a fourth of mankind. There'll be 421 million people or approximately die of hunger and 421 million people die of wild animals. And so I said at the beginning of this program, this is not for Christians. If you're a Christian, you're not going to be here. So I don't want to get you fearful, mm -hmm. but your relatives will be. Yes. The, the people that you know and that you care about uh, will that, be here. That on, don't know the Lord. That don't know the Lord. They're going to be here. And you don't. if you were one of those people that didn't know the Lord, you would want somebody to love you mm -hmm. enough to tell you to about tell the Lord. That's right. Yeah. And let, let, me, let me say this because a lot of people are afraid of witnessing. And I just want to say this. Witnessing is not what you do. It's who you are. Mm -hmm. And so when I witness, I don't talk about the Bible a lot. Uh, in other words, I don't try to prove theology right. to somebody because right. they, they don't want that. Right. Yeah. I just tell them what Jesus did for me. Yeah. And when I was 19 yeah. years old and I was lost, I had no conscience whatsoever. I was a very immoral, rebellious person, and I was empty on the inside. What alcohol couldn't do, what mm -hmm. chasing girls couldn't do, what rebellion couldn't do, one instant of time, Jesus filled my heart. Mm -hmm. And I told the Lord that morning in my friend's bathroom, I said, I'll serve you for the rest of my life and I won't turn back. Mm -hmm. So when I'm witnessing to a person, that's what I say. Let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Yeah. And so for people who are watching this and you have loved ones, that, that you, people that you care about, neighbors, friends, whoever it might be, people you work with, mm -hmm. don't, get, don't go Bible on them. You know, don't, try to, don't try to prove the yeah. Bible to them. Don't start preaching at them. But just tell them what Jesus did for you, yes. exactly. and when you and you plant that seed, then if they want more information, they want to talk about it. Then you start talking to the Bible about it, or invite them to go to church or something like that. But there's going to be a lot of people get saved during the tribulation, mm. but they're not protected. They're, now they may be protected from hunger. You know, God God will be with them, but they're certainly not protected from the Antichrist and from some of the worst things that are going to happen. Well, you know, we have to pray because. I know there are people watching that you're not ready to meet the Lord. And you say, well, I like go to church, but never actually pray that prayer you're talking about. So, Jimmy, if you lead us and we will repeat after you. It's really very simple, isn't okay. it? it? It really is. Just pray this prayer with me and open your heart to Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I open my heart to you. I, open my heart to you. I invite you to come in to be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Give me the gift of eternal life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the power to change and to serve you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, it's just that simple. We'd love to send you a book, Now What? It's English and Spanish, but I think it's important to tell someone. Go to the phone right now and call us and say, you know what? I prayed that prayer, and I am going to serve the Lord. And, you know, you think, Jimmy, that just praying a prayer like that wouldn't make a difference, but it still is the greatest miracle it is. that I've ever seen, yeah. a transformed life from praying a, a simple prayer like that and meaning it. And some people watching, the Holy Spirit has already been dealing with them, just like you. And the Holy Spirit has to be here, don't, doesn't he, to, to speak to your heart and you, open you, it. you would never be interested if he wasn't yeah. there. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is the one who draws our interest toward God. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father unless the, he draws them. Yeah. So I, I believe that the thief on the cross next to Jesus was a thief hanging on the cross, and he said to the Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Yes. That's how right. easy it was yes. for his eternal address to change. It's yes. just that simple statement. Mm. So good. So let's just kind of go through if we are we, where we are right now in, in time and eternity. You, you believe we're at the end of the end. I believe we're at the end. Jesus said the generation that sees these things will see all things fulfilled. And it began with Israel becoming a nation in 1948. They're about to celebrate their 74th birthday. Uh, Psalm 90 says the days of a man's life are 70 years, or if by reason of strength, they're 80 years. And so if a generation is 80 years, we're 74 years into that. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing mm -hmm. is, Joni, the, the labor pains. We're seeing the uh, two-year pandemic that's killed 6 million people. Uh, we're seeing earthquakes. We're seeing famines. We're seeing the beginning of a worldwide famine. 
And so the birth pangs that started in 1948 have gotten, because uh, I started preaching on the end times in 1982. And back in 1982, I kept saying it's going to get worse. And I thought, how could it get worse? You know, we've got <laughs> R-rated movies on TV at night. You know? yeah. And so but look, look at today mm. where you have Colorado yesterday that passed a law guaranteeing the right to abortion as a fundamental right uh, and, and those kinds of things. Or doing abortion after a baby's born a month after they're born. Yeah. You know, I, um, I'm, I've t I told you about the, the man that we're going to have on that died and spent 11 hours. He says his book's 11 Hours in Heaven. But he, he actually got to see like an aerial view of heaven. There was a huge building in the middle of heaven. It was, it was not brick and mortar. It was almost effervescent, I guess. And, mm -hmm. and he asked the question, although he had an angel with him, they didn't talk because that's kind of right. the way you hear it. But, it is. but he said to himself, I wonder what that building is. And the angel said, that's the nursery of heaven. Wow. wow. And he said, that's where all the aborted babies wow. go. Wow. And that's where children who die you know, miscarriage. at birth. Mm -hmm. and um, But he said the thing that stood out to him about it was, I mean, that's so moving. For those of you who had an abortion, you're going to see that baby again. That's right. God's yes. got that baby. But he said what stood out to him was that he had this impression of just the bravity of how much God cared for each mm -hmm. eternal soul. Yes. And we're talking about an eternal soul that's here. Right. And so yeah. it's so precious that there would be a nursery in heaven, no matter if that baby was aborted at, That's you know, right. four, Whatever five, stage, six yeah. weeks, or we're seeing them all the way up to 40 weeks, and like Rachel said, after they're born. Mm -hmm. But how could we not understand that a human being is an eternal soul to God? It's just, the, it's delusion. The, the Romans 1 calls it delusion. Yeah, it 2 Thessalonians 2 calls it delusion. It's just people are deluded because when you reject the truth, mm -hmm. you set yourself up for a deception. Mm -hmm. And it says God gave them over to a depraved mind. Yes. God gave and them over. God, that. That's right. I can't even fathom where people would accept that that would be okay for a president to say. I know. I know. Like but I understand the, the fact that more people aren't outraged. The Antichrist will make that look mild. Mm. The Antichrist will be completely, totally against the word of God in every way. Yeah. All right. Well, we are out of time. Ooh. We could keep talking forever. But I want you to remember that all the events of the end times are a display of God's sovereignty. He is the only way to heaven and the only hope for humanity. That's why it's so important that you and your loved ones know Jesus as Lord and Savior. How could you not receive the free gift of salvation? He paid the price for your sin, for my sin on the cross. He shed his blood and he rose again on the third day so that you and I can have eternal life. Wow, that's powerful. Well, if you're watching today and you or a loved one is away from the Lord, again, we want to pray with you. That's why that toll-free number is on the screen. We have prayer partners that are standing by, always ready to pray with you. Of course, you can send in your request by going to daystar.com and clicking on prayer. But I want to thank our dear friend Jimmy Evans for joining us at the table. It's always so interesting as he shares about the last days and other great teachings. You can visit him online, by the way, at endtimes.com. Get more information as well. And uh, let us know your thoughts about today's program by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. And tune in tomorrow as Jimmy takes on more of your end time questions. It's going to be good. We'll see you next time. Hey, I'm so excited about those of you that prayed that prayer. It's a new day for you, and God's got you, so you be encouraged. And uh, get a Bible. Get a Bible you can understand, a New King James Version. I mean, even the Living Bible. And find a good church. God's going to do some great things in your life. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.